Sometimes events can occur in our lives which act as catalysts for great change. Tragedy can transform us, and that's exactly what happened with this next inspiring man whose devastating loss set him on an entirely new life path. Hey Lance, how's it going mate? Good, nice to meet you. Great to meet you. And it's wonderful to see your incredible home. Yeah. First of all, tell me how you came to be living in a shipping container house. Well, I was working up in Alberta years ago and just decided the working life wasn't for me and wanted a lifestyle change. So I actually researched one of your videos and found budget shipping container living and uh, thought I'd give it a try. So when you were working up in Alberta, I'm guessing that was working in the oil industry up there? I was. I was working for uh, a road design company, uh, designing roads up in northern Alberta. What was it about that lifestyle that kind of grated on you? Well, the hours were long, working for someone else. Yes, I was trading my time for good money, but at the end of the day, it wasn't really worth it. It took its toll on my body and my social life, and yeah, it was not ideal. So what was the catalyst that really inspired you to make that life change? Two years ago, my mom got really sick and I was away and I felt the pull to come back to Victoria, but I didn't know quite how to do it. I didn't know how to transition my career to Victoria from Alberta. And so my mom was really sick and the idea was is that I would come back and spend some time with her. But the universe kind of kicked me in the butt a little bit and made me do it a little sooner when my best friend Darren passed away. At that point I came home and kind of was with friends and family and I was also uh, preparing for my mom's death. She was in the hospital. And I thought that I just needed a project to dive into with my time as well as doing all these things for the important people in my life and I started researching shipping container homes and tiny home living and educated myself basically on design uh, from your channel and yeah. I'm so sorry to hear about your friend and your mother. I think sometimes it's those life events that can be a catalyst and really show us how important and how precious life is and how important it is to be able to go on this journey that enables us to do things that are of true innate importance in our lives. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, after my mom passed away, it was all or nothing when it comes to life and I wasn't gonna work for anyone anymore. And I thought that, you know, if I just tried to make money at doing what I love to do, that would lead the most meaningful life and at the end of my life, I would have no regrets that way. So I decided just to focus on doing what I'm good at, doing what I love, and this tiny home living has helped support me in that. After my best friend passed away and my mom shortly after, I really needed some space to myself. And I found that moving into this tiny home, doing this project gave my mind a task and it gave my heart some healing. And I really found that this was the first step to wonderful change in my life, and it's, it's only gonna get better from here. And the land that you've found for your container home is really beautiful as well. You're kind of nestled right into the forest there. How did you come by this spot? Well, this place is actually my grandfather's house and property. As he was getting older, I thought that uh, he would need a little help maintaining this yard, and, and the family thought it was a good idea, so Everything just kind of worked out. And I mean, as far as a space goes for putting a tiny home, you can't get any better than an acreage backing on a forest, backing on a lake in the background. So yeah, it was just perfect. Now this whole build, you did this all yourself, didn't you? I did it all myself. I had some friends that helped me with some trades and everything uh, when things got tough. But uh, for the most part, I tried to do all the work myself keep the cost down as much as possible. I just wanted to become more connected with my home too, so I really wanted to do as much as I could. For me to work on this project as a DIYer, uh, 
it was very challenging, but very rewarding. I really learned a lot about myself and how I overcome problems in life. Uh, you can either walk away from a problem or you can find a way to fix it. And it allowed me to step over hurdles instead of walk away from them. And I take the skills that I learned from this project and bridge them over to my life and learning and growing as a person. So I really find that working on this project has really helped me in my life skills and my future moving forward. And what size shipping container is this? It looks like a 20 footer. This is a 20 footer, but it's bumped out about another four feet at the end there for my bedroom. Right. Yeah. Pretty clear to how you've done the bump out there. How does that work? Yeah, so the bump out is just the two end doors opened and I've slapped a roof on it and built a wall with a window and built a platform for a bed. So it's very easily dismantable. So essentially all I have to do is take the roof off, tip the wall out and close the doors. And this place is ready to be moved in, in maybe 24 hours. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, I'm super keen to check out your handiwork and see what you've done on the inside. Yes, come on in. Thank you very much. This place is fantastic. Yes, thank you very much. I really like the way that you've styled this home. It's light with all of the white, but you've really warmed it up with these beautiful timber features. And that branch is seriously cool. Yeah, that beautiful Arbutus branch was found uh, in my backyard here, uh, along with many of these furnishings. So yeah, this is a piece of oak uh, with the bark still on. And um, I really wanted to give this place uh, a modern feel, yet nature vibes as well. Yeah. And entering the home, we're immediately here in your kitchen. Yes, absolutely. I wanted a nice big sink as eating is uh, very important to me. I just wanted this place to be really functional. And lots of storage. I have more kitchen storage than I need actually. So it's, it's really nice. Uh, I'm really able to not sacrifice when it comes to eating. And then you've got the fridge and the gas burner over here as well, all the practical elements taken care of. Absolutely. I love cooking with gas, so propane was a great option for me. And uh, I got a nice full-size fridge here, so again, don't have to sacrifice on, on any eating. Beautiful artwork in here as well. Yes, thank you very much. These paintings are from local artists in town, good friends of mine, and they fit right in. They certainly do. And so many wonderful little elements of nature that you've brought into the home as well. Obviously lots of pot plants and crystals. And this terrarium is something quite special. Did you do this yourself? Yes, I did. Me and my partner uh, were in the back forest and just gathering some things and thought we'd make a nice terrarium. Especially with your location here, being nestled into the forest like this, and then taking so many of those natural elements and incorporating them into your home, it really just gives the whole space this wonderful natural feeling. Yeah, it's a really nice blend of inside and outside. And when you come here and stay and, and live here, it's very much relaxing, very nourishing. Absolutely. And is this your bathroom in here? This is. Good size shower? Yes, a nice full size stand up shower was really important to me. Uh, as you know, us being tall folks, uh, a, a good shower is really important. And then what is this contraption here? That is a one wheel. That is my favorite toy. It is an off-road skateboard. Uh, lots of fun. Sounds like a ridiculous amount of fun. And there is a hula hoop there as well. Yeah, so that is uh, another way that I make money. I create and sell LED flow art hula hoops. Very cool. That sounds like a super interesting job that you've created for yourself. Yeah, it's pretty fun and uh, I make lots of good friends doing it. I bet. And what's the other work that you're involved in? I am uh, an athletic development and career coach, particularly in hockey players. So I do skills training and career advice. Fantastic, because you used to be a pretty big hockey player yourself. I know you actually traveled to New Zealand for a year to play for our team down there. Yeah, yeah, I was in Auckland playing for the Admirals down there and uh, it was a lot of fun. Well, God knows we need the help, so thank you for that. <laughs> So you've got an off-road skateboard and a hula hoop in there, but I feel like that's replacing something that should probably be there instead. Yes, it is. In building this place, I plumbed in everything needed to put a toilet there, either composting or flushable. I found that I didn't really need it. I have an outhouse out back and uh, it's a little more forest vibes with the outhouse. So 
one day I will put a toilet there. Now, one of the notorious problems with shipping container homes is insulation. And here in Victoria, it gets pretty cold here. Can you talk to me about how you've insulated the container and how you keep it warm in the winter? Yeah, so that was one of the most important things that I designed, first of all. I wanted the insulation to be really good. Working with only 30 amps of service, I wanted to be able to heat this place adequately without too much power draw. So what I've done here is I've insulated about three inches of spray foam on the roof, as well as uh, three inches of styrofoam board on the roof. So the roof is about an R35 value. Uh, the walls are about two inches of spray foam and two inches of styrofoam. So about around an R20. And then what do you use for heating? I just have a small oil radiator heater uh, for the winter time. I find that in the spring and summertime, my body heat, my candles, and my cooking is enough to sufficiently heat this place. And then over here we have your bedroom and it's super cool the way that this branch kind of frames it and with the window there into the forest, it kind of looks like this wonderful connection that you have with the outdoors in this area. Yeah, absolutely. Every morning I wake up and I can see anything from deer walking by to squirrels, rabbits, birds feeding at the bird feeder. It's just wonderful. And I really wanted a good nature feel. And I felt like this arbutus branch growing out of the wall across the bedroom uh, was a good way to do that. And you've got the climbing ivy on it as well, which I especially like. Yeah, absolutely. It's quite cool the way that you've decorated your home with these logs as well. Yeah, these logs are all local logs that I found on the beaches here in Victoria. I just love wood art, so I thought they would fit well. So, tell me about this part of the space. Uh, this is my bedroom. Uh, this is where the doors open on the outside. It gives us an extra four feet of space, and uh, this is where I decided to put the bed. Also, with design in mind and max amount of storage as possible, I designed a few cool features in this bed. I've got three pull-out drawers that fully pull out all the way. They're about five feet long each, so plenty of clothes storage there, all seasons long. As well as uh, the platform of the bed is actually designed with holes in it and a space for a heater inside one of the drawers. So in the winter, I turn the heater on and it actually heats up the mattress and it's very, very nice. Uh, as well as when I'm reading or watching TV, I've got a little contraption where uh, the bed props up on one side and I'm able to comfortably, with, with good posture, read or watch TV. Fantastic. You've got a decent sized television here as well? Yep, absolutely. This TV swings over if I want to watch TV in bed and swings back when I'm not using it. Brilliant. And then you've got more lovely art in here as well? Yeah, absolutely. That's uh, another way that I make money. Um, I find that multiple sources of Income is kind of the best. So yes, these are local artists and I sell prints of them on my Instagram. I think that's just such a great way of doing it. That first you've managed to reduce all of your expenses and overheads and then you've created these little multiple income streams that just trickle in enough money to keep you going and to keep you working in things that you can be passionate about. Yeah, this lifestyle change was all about doing what I love to do and nothing else. Fantastic and beautiful artwork. Thank you very much. So you've been living in the home now for how long? I've been living in the home for about eight months now. And is tiny house life living up to its expectation for you? Oh, tiny home living, let me tell you. It is one of the best transitions I've ever made in my life. Tiny home living has really taught me a lot about myself. I'm really diving into what's important in my own heart and my mind. The evolution of myself has really come a long way recently in the last two years. And it's really given me the seclusion and the space that I need to dive into figuring out what I want to do in life, how I want to live, how I want to treat people uh, moving forward. Tiny Home Living has also allowed me to do really what I want to do in life, to make money how I want to make money. I don't want to work a nine to five job or like I was in Alberta, a 12 hour day job. To get ahead, really I'm just doing less. And it's really opened my heart and made my life feel very full. This was a DIY project and obviously you started this wanting to be very budget conscious. So what was the final cost of this home? The final cost of this home was somewhere between 13 and $14,000. So it was really light on the wallet, which was great. 
this is an astounding result for that cost. Yeah, thank you very much. You have done exceptionally well. Thank you. And so what does the future hold for you now? I think my next project uh, is going to be a van conversion. So I think the van tiny home combination is just going to be uh, the most beautiful life experience imaginable. I totally agree. That's living the dream right there. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Lance, you have done such a brilliant job on this home. I love your story and all of the heart that's gone into building this space. And it really is just such a wonderful home. So thank you for sharing it with me. Thank you very much. Lance really has created himself a spectacular home here. And while the events that led him to this point may have been really difficult and challenging, he's overcome those challenges and managed to come out the other side with a brand new take on life and a wonderful adventure ahead of him.